Carpentry and antiques are my passions. Through the years, I have amassed various collections as well as useful woodworking skills. I have learned that just by keeping your eyes open while earning a living, you can learn a lot. I'm always looking for ways to do things differently and deviate from what's conventional. Join me on a journey of education and entertainment through projects and adventures. My name is Austin Tischler and welcome to my channel. Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to figure out a novel way to finish this wood box. I built this a few months back um, in the springtime and I want to do something kind of different with it. Um, I'll show you the plan here. So I might make this into like a two-part video. I don't know. I'll see how long it is. But basically the plan is to do a standing seam aluminum roof. And I'm basically going to break the aluminum backwards. So it'll just be the aluminum showing. And I think that'll look kind of cool. And then for the front, I think I'm going to do just like a black background and then just these cut off logs kind of on this area and then this end I think I might use these six by sixes and cut them shorter obviously and then put them at different depths kind of like how they're stacked here and then on this side I might I think I'm going to use some pallet wood and stain that up and put it on like louvers. I don't know. I'll kind of figure it out as I go. So the first thing I've got to do is bring the brake outside. Um, it's kind of a mess in here right now, so it'll just be easier to break all the metal outside. And plus, these are going to be longer pieces, and you can't really windmill them to spin them around and break it properly in here, so it'll just be a lot easier to do it outside. So I think I'll set the brake up right about here. It'll be close enough and I won't have to move a whole lot of stuff. So this is the coil of aluminum I picked up today. And I got this one because a lot of the times they're painted on both sides. But I want to use this as the showing side. Just because it kind of looks cool and then it's painted white, the side you're supposed to use. But I think this will give it a more novel look and it'll be a nice metal face. So I'm going to open this coil up and I'm going to cut the panels or I'm going to cut one blank at three foot nine inches and the reason I'm going an inch less is just so it clears the hinges at the top. I'll be able to put a flashing over to cover it later. Measure out three foot nine and make a mark. Or three foot eleven, I mean, not three foot nine.
So now this will be one length of standing seam roofing panel. So now what I'll have to do is find out how wide to make each one of these. Um, so I'll be using that two foot chunk as efficiently as possible. I'll try and cut the blank so I use everything up. And I want to try and get it so each rib, the standing seam, um, will line up at each end evenly so I won't have a shorter piece on there looking silly. So since I know this is two feet, I'm going to measure this out at one foot one and a half inches. So I'll go 13 and a half out. an inch and a half away, that will give me a one foot chunk. So now I'll go and cut these both again, and that, or maybe I should make these at one foot rather than six inches. Maybe I'll just use these like this. I'll just do, uh, take some measurements and see what'll look best. So I've decided I'm just going to go with the 12 inch blank. Um, I think that'll look more proportionally correct. So the first thing I'm going to start with is a hem going this way. I'm going to want to make this an inch out. I'll just double check. So I will go with a one inch high rib. That'll be the standing seam. And then for this end, put this one here. And that gets hemmed up just like that. So what's going on here is that's kind of a little bit of a mess of hems. I just wanted that edge to be cleaner so it's not so sharp. So the next one I make, this piece, how it's got that opening there, will lock in right over top of this and it'll 
keep going like that. So that's basically how the roof panels are going to go. So I'll break a few more of these and show you how they click together. So this is pretty much the idea right here. Um, I kind of wanted to make this like a true fastenerless system here, but um, that would take up a lot more. Like I'd have to break another inch and a half out of this to stand that up and have this lip be facing down so I could staple it underneath and then I wouldn't have to put any screws in but I think what I'm going to do is put a screw here and same up top just to hold this from ever blowing up. Um, they fit on there pretty tightly like I don't think that would ever disconnect but just in case I think I'll just do one screw. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the idea of the standing seam roof. It kind of looks a little more elegant in my opinion than the tough rib stuff. But that'll be all along there. And then I think I'll just do some sort of flashing for the top. Kind of up at an angle that will still allow this to open. So I'll have to figure something out there. So, to be perfectly honest, I really have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just kind of figuring this out as I go. Um, I think it's going to work okay, though. It will be watertight because there's no way for water to get in. Um, I'll only have one screw with the rubber head washer. So, not that this is just a firewood bin. It really doesn't matter if it's perfectly watertight, but... Just for practice, I'd like to kind of get it perfect, but yeah, it should turn out all right, I think. So what I'm going to do now is you'll notice this sheet of plywood has a curve in it, which is noticeable if you stand back. You can probably see that a little bit, and I don't really like that. So what I'm going to do is put what's called a stiff back on which is going to be just a 2x4 on edge that will get screwed through the top down into the bottom and that should be enough to hold this piece of plywood straight. So what I've subsequently decided to do is rather than try and do all the math to make these exactly divisible by 96 inches, um, I just made them divisible by two, um, the blanks from the coil stock. So for the last ones, I'm just going to center um, one of these panels 
and that should give me an even panel on each side. Um, I don't want to just run it like that and have one wild one at the end just because I'm kind of meticulous and I want to do this to make it look as good as possible. So yeah, I'll break two custom ones for the ends that'll be a little bit shorter, probably about half um, of the distance in the trough. So yeah, I'll make those and I'll put them on and then the roof will be pretty much looking complete except for that flashing up top. So I got these last two end ones broke. They're a little smaller, but I think I'll just live with that rather than trying to figure out how to properly divide these up. And even if I tried that, they'd never be exact because after 11 panels or 12 or however many are on there, um, even the most minute inconsistency in my braking would cause it to be out at the end. Even if I was out like 128th of an inch on every one, by the end, you know, that would add up to a quarter or whatever. So, um, just best to do it like that. Then I can get a pretty accurate measurement. And then what I'm going to do for this end here is just break the same kind of thing that I did here that will capture this sharp end. And it'll come down the rest of the lid and hook it on and underneath. So that'll give it a clean look the whole way, seamless, and I think it'll look alright. Uh, it's getting pretty late now, so I think I'll just come back and do some of this tomorrow. So now I'm breaking the flashings that will cover the edge of the plywood. And I'm starting with what's called a reverse cam. And what that does is folds the metal over backwards. And then if any water gets up in there, it'll hit this reverse hem and not be able to go any further than that. So that will go on the corner, or the edges of the plywood, I should say. So I've got this flashing on, and everything screwed down and fitting nicely. So I'm going to make the flashing for these edges, which will be bent just like this to capture this, and come down and around and hook underneath. So I'll show you how I break that. So I cut my blank at four and a quarter, and then I'll just do the same type of bend I did for the other ones.
myself just a little bit of room here. I think I'll go just a sixteenth over three quarters, just so it's not too tight to slide on there. Now that will slide over that last little rib and capture the bottom of the plywood. Now I think that looks all right, um, fairly crisp and seamless, makes it look like just one cohesive roof system. Now the top piece, the cap that falls uh, off that doesn't open. I'm going such a big ham on here one is because I can't fit it any further back into the throat and I'm gonna go two inches on this band and just because the lid is gonna lift up on this a bit I don't want any white to be showing so you might be able to see underneath it a little bit so if it's all aluminum it'll look a lot better on here so it clears all the standing seams.
Now I'll just have to get my measurement for how far back. So I'll go seven inches back from this point here. this a little more than a 90, well quite a bit more than a 90, just because the roof is a 412 pitch, so it needs to come down to the other side. That's a little bit much, but I'll be able to flex it into place. So that top flashing is put on. I just washed this off. I had to kind of walk up there to put it on, but just washed my footprints off but I think that should be all right um, it opens which is good bending anything too badly just kind of has to flex it a little but I was expecting that so I think now all I have to do is figure out something here um, I don't really know what I'm gonna do yet. Something to make it look a little nicer than that. Maybe just stick a piece in here and cut this back and just, I think I'll just have to deal with this. That was kind of going over the hinges, but there wasn't a way to mount the hinges on top and I wanted the hinges to be concealed. So I think I'll just have to live with that, but it's on the back side where you don't see it. So whatever. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just make a little piece to kind of continue this. And then once I figure out what I'm going to do back here, then I can cut this back accordingly and fold it and make it all nice. So yeah, that's that for the roof pretty much. <laughs> 